Welcome everyone. It's good to be with you here in this space and also online for those who are either watching the live stream or the recording that you will find on our YouTube channel. Nevertheless, uh, this is a service of prayers for healing. In the Iona tradition, I had the privilege of traveling to Iona in, 19, in 2014 and uh, uh, experienced the service of prayers for healing that they had there and uh, wanted to uh, share that uh, as a way of coming back from my sabbatical time. And so that's the genesis of this particular service. Healing is an odd thing because everybody has a different opinion a perspective, a different way of understanding it. Many people are looking for healing of whatever ails them in mind, body, or spirit, and hoping that it is like a miracle. And it happens right away, and it's a cure. And other people understand uh, healing to be something that is uh, a little different. It is of the soul. It is of the relationship. It is of the social structure. So, for example, uh, with the pandemic that we have been experiencing for the last 20 months, healing can often be a way of looking at the ways in which the pandemic has pointed out how we as a society have failed the most uh, marginalized and uh, uh, um, uh, those who, are, who continue not to have everything that so many of us take for granted. The other reality is that healing can involve a cure, but not necessarily is a cure a healing. And so this service is a way of communing with God, of taking the time and the energy to pay attention to God, to God's presence among us and within us and around us, and also to heal relationships that we find are broken or fractured. Again, it's by paying attention to God's presence and God's will that leads us to a place of healing. I'd also like to say thank you to David, who is on my left and, and uh, capably, as always, skillfully and with great passion, because uh, after a Sunday morning service, you got to admit, he probably would like to just put his feet up and relax the rest of the day. So David, thank you for leading us at the keyboard. And thank you to Judy and Jim Zerubik, who are up in the balcony taking care of all the technology so that I don't have to worry about it and we can make this happen smoothly. As well, they're the reason why you're able to watch this online and also ways and why you can hear us here in person. Um, we also, uh, whenever we <coughs> excuse me, uh, use the screens, whenever you see red print and bold, it is for the worship leader, in this case myself, to read and black print and bold is for everyone to read together and uh, those who read together will be led by the dulcet tones of Judy Zerubik from the balcony as she giggles at that in indication. Let's practice that as we acknowledge the territory on which we are privileged to gather. As the healing spirit flows and speaks to our hearts on this land, we acknowledge this day that we gather for worship on the traditional territories of the Saugeen Ojibwe and the other indigenous peoples who preceded them, the original nations of this land, and we acknowledge with respect their history, their spirituality, and their culture. So let us join together in the opening responses. We gather here in your presence, O oh God, in our need and bringing with us the needs of the world. We come to you, for you come to us in Jesus. And you know by experience what human life is like. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come with our hopes and with our fears. We come as we are because you invite us to come. And you have promised never to turn us away. Let's join together in affirming that by singing, My soul finds rest in God alone.
Our Bible reading this evening is from Luke chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Just then in front of him there was a man who had dropsy, and Jesus asked the lawyers and Pharisees, is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him. Then he said to them, if one of you has a child or an ox that has fallen into a well, will you not immediately pull it out on the Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. Let's join together in prayer. Loving God, may your spirit open our hearts and our minds that we may hear your word within the words of scripture, that we may find the way of Jesus guiding our feet as we try to walk that path of faith, of understanding, of love. Amen. So if you take a look at the picture on the screen, uh, the uh, passage that Judy just read talks about a man who was at this party who had dropsy. Now, dropsy is an old word for basically edema, too much fluid. So in this picture, you'll see that in the, on the picture on the left-hand side, you press a finger into a, a, a leg that is full of edema, and then you take your hand away, and the indentation remains for quite a while. That's really all it is. But the reality is that when Jesus was invited to this party, this isn't the first time in Luke's Gospel that Jesus was invited to a party where the Pharisees were the ones who were the hosts. Jesus was invited, hi Bob, just like Bob's invited. <laughs> Jesus was the one who was invited, and yet there was an agenda. It was a case it was a case of having Jesus there so they could watch him like a hawk. So, the gentleman who was there, who had edema, who had dropsy, was not an accident. And after all, the meal that was scheduled for Jesus' invitation happened to be on the Sabbath. Because Jesus had already built a reputation as someone who would defy the, the, the Jewish authorities in the temple and would heal on the Sabbath. And yet all of the, the uh, teachings in the Mishnah, which is one of the holy books of Judaic faith of the time, was that you were not allowed to work whatsoever on the Sabbath. And healing was seen to be work, perhaps work of the most divine and lofty nature, but nevertheless, work. And so, they watched it. And I'm willing to bet that they put this man who was living with edema, and often edema is caused by any number of things, but usually that means somebody's not in great health, especially in those days. I'm willing to bet they put this man right in a seat where Jesus could not possibly miss him. Jesus walks in, and he knew in some ways that he was going into a risky environment. But Jesus was always there, no matter who the person was. You were never too powerful nor too marginalized for him to consider you as a person, as someone deserving his attention. And so he saw the man. And you can just imagine him thinking to himself, well, here it goes again. I've been set up once more, so let me just address the issue right away. So he looks at everybody there, all the Pharisees, all the teachers of the law, the ones who go out to all the synagogues in the countryside surrounding that area, surrounding Jerusalem, surrounding their faith, the center of their faith, the ones who go out to interpret deliberately to the commoner what the Torah, the law, is all about. How shall we live? And these Pharisees are specifically assigned to tell them. 
And Jesus said, rhetorically, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And you can just see his words sitting out there with the Pharisees and everybody gathered around, kind of like a spectator sport, you know. And the people who are there go, well, we know that it's not lawful. What's he going to do? And Jesus doesn't say anything more, but he acts. He heals the man of his dropsy and then sends him on his way. And it's interesting that the last part of that particular scripture is all about the crowd who was there seeing the value in what Jesus did. That Jesus didn't really call out the Pharisees. Jesus lived honestly and with humility, but integrity with who he was and the ministry he was trying to communicate. And you can just imagine that like stones dropped into a pond and the ripples keep extending far beyond where they entered the water, so too did his action stimulate conversation, thinking, wondering, perhaps learning, in all of those who not only heard him, but saw him. Jesus didn't reject anyone. But Jesus did reject that which would separate people from one another, that would stop them from doing good for one another, that would stop them from being righteous, and righteous being the term for right relation, of, of building those relationships that are mutual and life-giving and loving. In this healing narrative, the biggest healing that Jesus was trying to accomplish, and we're never really sure, but we kind of suspect it wasn't entirely successful, that Jesus was trying to heal the attitude of those at that meal, all the privileged and the powerful, all those who knew where their station in life was, all those who were secure, safe, comfortable, that their understanding needed to be turned upside down. That what was important was the persons that needed their love. And I can only imagine how intimidating that must have felt to the Pharisees, to their families, to their servants, to those who wrote it down. Because obviously some of the disciples were there as well. When we heal in that way, we seek understanding in our faith. We seek to see in the other person, not an enemy, but an opportunity for a new relationship. That is the most powerful part of the gospel is the healing that we enact between one another. For the prayers of intercession that we will soon be offering, there will be a series of silences. During those silences, you are invited to name people, events, or groups, either silently or aloud, and each moment of silence will be completed by the words, May they know the deep peace of Christ. And immediately after those words are spoken, then we will be singing the chant that's printed in your bulletins. So let's practice that refrain now. First, let us listen to the music as David plays it, and then we'll join together in singing it. Children. 
Loving God, you share with us the care of creation and call each of us by name. We remember that those who encountered Jesus found acceptance, healing, and the possibility of new life. That the disciples, though imperfect human beings, through prayer and touch, helped others to find healing in the power of your Holy Spirit. And so in the name of the triune God, we pray. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those who suffer pain and ill health with their families, friends, and those who care for them. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence those who suffer in mind and spirit and all those who care for them. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence the suffering people of our world in the places where people are experiencing division, injustice, and violence. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Loving God. We hold in your healing presence those struggling to overcome addiction or abuse, those supporting and working with them, and all those suffering has distanced them from those who love. May they know the deep peace of Christ.
loving God, we hold in your healing presence those facing bereavement. We also pray for those who have died. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Loving God, we give you thanks for health restored and prayers answered. We hold in your healing presence and peace those whose needs are not known to us. And those whose names we do not know, but who are known to you and for whom we have been asked to pray. And we name in our hearts those who are close to us. May they know the deep peace of Christ. nurses, doctors, and all those who work in every part of our health care system here and those laboring around the world. We pray for those who work in rescue services on land, in the sea, or through the air, both in our cities and in the rural countryside. We pray all this in trust and in faith as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not put us to the test, but rescue us from evil. For yours is the dominion and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At the end of the next song, if you wish, wish to seek prayer for yourself on behalf of someone else or for a crisis or event in the world, you are invited to come and take your turn and either to kneel on the pads that I've got in front of the communion table or to stand at one part of the communion table. Uh, those of you who are online, if you wish just to take time, whether you wish to kneel where you are or just fold your hands and bow your head, or whatever posture works for you in order to commune with God and seek the healing for which you are looking. You may alternatively choose, for those of you online, if you wish to lift your hands to the screen as a way of seeking the blessing, but also giving the blessing, a mutual exchange. Similarly here, if you are in person and you wish to just do this instead of come forward, that too will work. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are troubled, and I will give you rest. So come, you who are burdened by regrets and anxieties, you who are broken in body or in spirit, you who are torn by relationships and by doubt, you who feel deeply within yourselves the divisions and injustices of our world. Come, 
For Jesus invites us to bring him our brokenness. Our song is as the deer pants for the water. And I'd invite you to sing the words as they appear on your screen. join together in prayer before we either come forward or online kneel or put yourself in an attitude of prayer that works for you let us join together in prayer for the laying on of hands as we lift our prayers for healing God our Creator we are held in your everlasting arms Jesus our Savior we are healed by your wounded hands Holy Spirit, be present as we reach out to one another in love. I invite you now to lift those things that are hard and deep in your heart for which you need healing and hope and God's divine touch. To share in that healing power, let's lift our hands to bless one another, to convey the power of Christ. And we repeat together, Spirit of the living God, present with us now, enter you body, mind, and spirit, and heal you of all that harms you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Join together in singing the final hymn, hymn number 182, which is Stay With Us Through the Night. Stranger till the morning breaks again. 
Watch now, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones, O Lord Christ. Rest your weary ones. Bless your dying ones. Soothe your suffering ones. Pity your afflicted ones. Shield your joyous ones, and for all your love's sake. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are online, feel free to rest in God's Spirit for as long as you feel the need. Here in person, feel free to stay as long as you wish. We're not locking up until everybody is good. Go in peace. Amen.